everybody, Dr. Annie Armstrong here, Head to Toe Spine Sports Therapy. I'm really excited to be here with Dr. Lee Schuster. He is joining our clinic August 1st. Um, Dr. Lee is a graduate of New York Chiropractic College, and uh, he has been focusing a lot of his attention since graduation on the super tough athletes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's been <laughs> rugby all the way. And uh, you said volleyball too, and yes, a other. Yes, done a little work with AVP. Um, they just had a, the Seattle Open was a couple weeks ago. What's AVP? Um, that is a professional volleyball organization. Okay, okay. I'm not exactly sure what it stands for. Okay. I tried to look it up the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, all the term, you know, the quick terminology. <laughs> and you're with uh, um, the Seattle Sar Saracens? So the Seattle Saracens are the premier club team in okay. Seattle, and okay. then there's the Seattle Seawolves, which are the professional team during okay. the MLR, Major League Rugby. Man, I mean, you know, we always talk about, like, football, right? And then oh, yeah. rugby rugby guys say, well, you know, if, if um, you know, rugby's essentially football without a helmet, is that, like, I, I don't know rugby that yeah. well, right? But but that's what, what I kind of hear is that it's, like, if you're the ultra-tough man to play rugby. Oh, yeah. I mean, if, if you're into 80 minutes of pure controlled chaos, that's the sport to go for. I mean, just so, like soccer, it's straight through each half. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. You know, I'm going to have to, I'm going to obviously have to watch more rugby oh, now, that, now that I'm getting to know you. <laughs> So what, what, like, what, did you play rugby, like, as a, in college, or yeah. what was your passion? So I started playing rugby in, in high school, my senior year. Um, well, I knew I was going to undergraduate that I had rugby, and yeah. a lot of my friends played for that team. So I played throughout college, played some men's club. Then got, once I got into chiropractic college, I was like, kind of had to put that on the back burner a little bit. Yeah. Can't break my hands, can't yeah, break my face yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like, you know. Yeah, so I yeah, know your hands. I know. <laughs> well, I don't know, personally for me, the most injuries I've ever had in my life I shouldn't probably say this on live video, but was during chiropractic college, you oh, know, really? because, well, I mean, we're all learning to adjust on each other, oh, yeah. right? It's like, let me just try to adjust your neck yeah. one more time. So, so that was probably second best for me. I mean, first best, definitely rugby. Yeah. Like, yeah. More rough yeah. 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 No kidding. <laughs> super, super rough. So, so you got out of school, you went, you went into rugby, you managed to get yourself aligned with these two great teams, which is, mm -hmm. which is really a coup. That's oh, yeah. pretty awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. And then it sounds like from, from talking with you earlier that you really found some people that you wanted to follow here in Seattle, too, in regards to your learning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, talk I mean, a bit about, about that. Well, that's one of, the, one of the main reasons why I come head to toe is that we have all these other practitioners that know so many more things. and Everybody's so willing to just impart their knowledge on you. So that was one of the best things about um, coming on to head to toe. But um, the Seattle area in general, it's just kind of a beacon for physical therapists and yeah. like people that work with the body and chiropractors and whatnot. Um, Functional Patterns is, has, a, has a main headquarters down in Belltown, yeah. and that's somebody that, like, them, Naughty Aguilar, those are people that I'm trying to connect with and learn more from. I'm really excited you're going to be bringing that to the clinic. Oh, and, me too. you know, again, it's like, it's really neat how Head to Toe's grown. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I know that we're getting to know each other, but... Um, you know, for those of you who have been with me for a long time, you guys remember I, I had a, you know, a 500 square foot office and it was just me, right? And I was <laughs> sort of determined to do things differently. You know, I was, you know, I'm like, I'm spend time with patients. I'm going to do all this active release. I'm going to do exercise therapy and all these things. And, and, uh, and it's always been so fun, but now having this opportunity to work with now you, with Dr. Harris, with Dr. Janney, like just this, this growth of knowledge has been, it's been fun. And I feel like our tool, our toolkit is just, is just going to grow exponentially with you oh, yeah. and having you aboard. Well, so let's make it a tool shed. And so let's make it a tool shed. Oh, I like that so much more than a kit, a tool shed. So back to rugby, like I, like, I feel like, um, you know, rugby is so like, I just think of it as such a tough sport, you know? Mm -hmm. And then here, you know, we have really, well, not just here, but, you know, you know the huge growth of CrossFit. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then some really other high-intense workout programs like Orange Theory and a couple other gyms just really, like, putting it down hard. So how do you feel about, like, I, I guess what I want to ask is how do you relate that, the experience you've had with rugby and, and, and sort of the injuries you see? Are there are common injury patterns you see? And how does that maybe tie into people who are working really hard at CrossFit? What yeah. do you see there? So, a lot of people that I work with in the rugby teams are actually yeah. CrossFitters as well. Okay. Um, yeah, that would so, make sense. Yeah, I mean, that cross-training component that CrossFit allows, like, where you're lifting weights and you're also moving your body weight and pushing off the ground and running, I mean, it's very similar to rugby. It's very high impact, a lot of running, and you have to move your body very well to play that sport. Yeah. Um, but just in general, I'd say they, they do share a lot of similar injuries, more some around the hips as well as the shoulders. Um, with CrossFit, I see a lot of people that have bicipital tendonitis, yeah. um, well, and yeah. that's pretty major. Anything over the head, that's where they're getting it in CrossFit, but 
in rugby, like surprisingly, there's a lot of things that are overhead as well, mm -hmm. like whether you're binding on another opponent or you're lifting somebody in a line out. Um, what does that mean, binding on another opponent? So, uh, you know, like a scrum down, like where mm -hmm. they have like eight people on eight people and they all come together and they push over the ball. Yeah, yeah. So they have to bind together and that's, it's very, um, that whole um, uh, movement itself is very dependent on everybody being bound together. Okay. If you don't have 16 people bound together, it's either that the scrum will fall or there could be a penalty or a dangerous play altogether. Huh, okay. Um, so that, that binding, um, that they have to do in that um, in that move in the scrum is they're grabbing their opponent and pulling them in, very similar to like a lat pull down, mm -hmm. or if some of them have to push as well, so very similar to like an overhead press. Cool. Um, so a lot of that stuff is very similar to the Olympic training that yeah. goes on at CrossFit. So yeah. that's actually part of the reason why we tell some of the rugby guys to go to go in, be involved in CrossFit. Yeah. yeah, it's so it's so awesome because CrossFit is like the dynamic overhead movement. Oh, like yeah. it is huge. You well, know, that's one of the main things they do. Exactly, mm -hmm. and it's just it's just such an amazing uh, training piece. Oh, yeah. So that's cool. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. That's really cool. So 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 you see a lot of sort of shoulder stuff. I mean, oh, yeah. I definitely. You know, if you ask me, what, what do you see from coming from CrossFit? Mm -hmm. it, it is shoulders. Yeah, um, ACs and bicep tendons. Yes, over and over, and then and then definitely hip. You yeah. know, so uh, you second on the hip. Like you see a specific injury in the hip, or just generalized like super tight, not um, moving. Or... Extreme tightness. Yeah. Like flexors, especially. <laughs> Yes. I mean, that's and that goes I think for most athletes that squat and deadlift yeah. um, that tends to be an issue but um, a lot of the rugby guys they tend to lack mobility which is different yeah. than um, different than other sports like in the hips especially yeah um, but it's very similar to CrossFit where it's like you're doing sagittal motions you're doing bringing stuff off the ground and straight up and then you're running forward but you're mm -hmm. not really doing much side to side stuff yeah so that's stuff that we try to implement in the athletes and CrossFitters it seems to be the bane of all training, though. Well, actually, just movement patterns. I mean, if we could generalize one thing, we're, we're way too forward in our movement mm -hmm. patterns, and we seem to lack that side to side. Right. Try to know. get people a little bit more rotation. Everyone's going to do the clamshells. Yeah. Just, yeah, <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm sure we can get better than that. But, <laughs> but I mean, seriously, right? We just don't use our side body enough. It's true. Um, and it's and it goes it seems to go throughout um, mm -hmm. you know, everything. I don't know about Pilates, actually, as much. But from there forward, mm -hmm. um, we tend to use our front body way more for all patterns of life. Oh, yeah. So what about like upper back stuff? Do you see a lot of that? And in... so upper back, especially like around the neck, mm -hmm. like um, not necessarily like the upper back as much as maybe like the CT region. Yeah. Um, that stuff that tends to get a little jammed up as well. I mean, you have people that are pulled inward because they have large pecs or yeah. because they're being crunched together in those small positions, like in the scrums and the rucks. Um, and that in of itself, they have to have a lot of neck mobility and they don't actually, some of them lack it just because mm -hmm. they have large traps that are protecting their shoulders. Right. Um, so the, it tends to be a little bit of an issue, but it, I find that it, as you correct more the hips and the way that the upper back is, I guess, uh, aligned, mm -hmm. um, simple chiropractic stuff is usually very helpful yeah. and postural training in general. Yeah, yeah, the beauty of a good adjustment oh, is, yeah. just, is just huge. It's huge massive. on athletes. Oh, yeah. Especially the road guys, they, that's all they come to me for most yeah. of the time. It's either the tape or can you adjust me or yeah. do some ART or some sort. Of yeah. Thing. yeah, awesome. I mean, that's really where so many of these things have been born. I mean, certainly active release was born around the triathlete crowd, mm -hmm. you know, as you know. So it started with Iron Man and, and actually Dr. Leahy, who developed active release. Mm -hmm. So he is a, I think he did Kona like 20 times. Yeah. He's like, it's just, he's just crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's amazing. But I mean, he just started developing this protocol for athletes. And that's, I think what I love about it mm -hmm. is, is how effective it is. And that sort of like, you've got five minutes, I can get you moving so much oh, yeah. better. With a couple of really good approaches. Oh, that's the only amount of time we have sometimes. At that's practice. all you have. Yeah, right? 30, 40 guys running around the field. You can't spend 20 minutes with them on yeah. the sideline. Yeah, you don't have the luxury of it. Right. Nor do you have the luxury of a clinic and all the equipment and bells mm -hmm. and whistles. You, know, you just got to have really excellent manual therapy. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. That's awesome. So, so yeah, getting that translation. So you're seeing hips, you're seeing shoulders, kind of the key things you're seeing. Yeah. All right. And I guess the curiosity then, talking about more of us everyday folks, is. Like if you were to think, like, what do I need to do to really help everyday athletes? Mm -hmm. You know, people like myself, people like you know, over forty, mm -hmm. you know, who are who are you know trying to stay strong, trying to work out, whether they're doing CrossFit or, or you know home exercise or whatever they're doing. Like, 
is there something that you really feel passionate if everyone did every day that oh, yeah. they would they would be healthier? Absolutely. I mean, I'll preface that that answer with we didn't have one major injury on our rugby team this year, the CLC Wolves. We had I think we had one broken thumb and that was that's the amazing. most major injury that we had all season. So that's huge congratulations to you cool. looking after those guys. That's well, massive. I mean, it's it's more me just nagging them and telling nagging, them, yeah, there you telling go, them right. to get on this stuff that we're about to talk about. Yeah. Um, just purchasing a lacrosse ball, two, three dollars, yeah. and putting it on tight areas of your body, yeah. with, like any muscle you can. I have to say, if you can do that once a day in a tight area, you're going to improve that yeah. area yeah. after a week. Just being consistent with that is massive. Yeah, um, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, so a little lacrosse ball, and just bring your joint to a full range of motion. I like to use functional range conditioning, mm -hmm. um, and cars specifically, controlled articular rotations, which okay. is controlled joint rotation, joint okay. circles. Um, bringing your joint through a full range of motion and it stimulates um, the proprioceptors in your joint capsule yeah. because they're only uh, engaged when they're at end ranges. Mm -hmm. um, so if you constantly push that end range day after day, eventually you're going to build a range of motion that is one, sustainable, and two, it's full. If you have full range of motion, you have full capacity to actually move well. And if you have full capacity to move well, performance just increases from there. I love that. And how simple is that? To take your, you, I mean, you don't have, you, didn't, you don't need any special equipment. No, nope. twenty minutes a day. Twenty minutes a day. That's it. Take everything through full movement, and you know everyone knows I'm a massive uh, foam roller nag, the oh, yeah. small nag. I mean, I've been on it for years, have right? To. In fact, for those of you watching, I am teaching foam rolling tonight. Little plug, yeah. six thirty, <laughs> um, and lacrosse falling. But I mean, it is. It, it's. It, it seems like too simple. You know, mm -hmm. you look at someone like yourself who's like, you know, you're working on high level athletes, mm -hmm. right? And, but again, it's back down to these basic, oh. really basic principles. Very back to the Move basics. Move your joint in all ranges of motion. Mm -hmm. Loosen up your tight muscles. Don't let the, you know, don't let those muscles get ahead of you, too, yeah. right? I mean, you should be working your body really hard. It's like working hard to maintain your flexibility in your muscles, mm -hmm. not letting that junk build up. It's just, right. I, I just think it's huge. I mean, if you're only trying to keep the flexibility in a certain range, you're neglecting all the other stuff. Right. So just move through that full range of motion. Yeah. Don't, don't necessarily be worried about like, oh, I want to do the splits and do just the splits. <laughs> Work everything out. No, just the splits. So I think um, today, actually, Dr. Lee is going to be doing some some filming for us, and mm -hmm. hopefully, maybe you'll share some of that with us today. Yeah. Um, for and sure. what we'll do is we're going to put it out on daily exercises on on Tuesdays. Is we'll put out some tips from Dr. Dr. Lee on just some of the stuff you're talking about because yeah. you know I, I know it's simple but I think a lot of people are like what does that mean full range yeah, you know so definitely. so that'll be really really useful okay so that's easy so uh, great tip so far what about um, kind of so key takeaway would be really that uh, you know moving your joints through full range every day mm -hmm. keeping muscles loose and then any other magic you want to share with us through this Facebook Live, or would you rather just have people come in and see you? Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, there's two easy things that everybody can do. One, just be hydrated. I mean, 99% yeah. of your body by volume is water. Yeah. Um, it's 70% when you factor in all the other um, substances and molecules in the body, but 99% of your body, if you were to pick off a piece of skin, 99% of it would be water. Ew. So, yeah, you want... That you want water constantly throughout yeah, the day. Yeah, I know um, it's so important. The Dr. Bruce says that's his big thing too. Yeah, you know he's always drink water, drink water. That was his first, I think, video that he did for us was drink water. That's like one of the main things we press with our athletes at the Sea Wolves. And yeah, I think that's what's helped us win a national championship this year. I mean, yeah, just them staying on their recovery and just maintain, maintaining that level of health that they need. So, do you have a nutritionist that works with them as well? And we don't have any nutritionists yet, uh, not, not in an official capacity yet, um, but we have had some people come and speak with them, give some, some tips, and the guys are always asking, and they're, yeah. the cool thing about them is that they always want to learn, so they're yeah. always looking for reading material, which we provide them, and just kind of work together as a team, rather than having specific treatment plans and eating plans. So. Yeah, so water and beer. Yeah, definitely a beer on a Saturday <laughs> night after game. <laughs> Water and Guinness, right? Right. Yeah, there you that's, go. That, that's your favorite thing to drink, of course. Yeah. You gotta yeah. go to Guinness. Awesome. So, um, so Dr. Lefferley is going to start with us here at Head to Toe August 1st, which is not very long from now, actually. Oh, it's only about two weeks. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be um, working Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. The rest of the time he's committed to the team, mm. um, which is awesome. But we'll get him for some days anyway. Uh, he's right now working on we're climbing through the insurance ladders and, mm -hmm. and all that sort of good stuff So but within not too much time he should be ready to roll so um, Come and book an appointment with him and learn some of this new fantastic stuff 
that yeah. you're going to be teaching with the functional range conditioning. I'm excited to add that to the office. I think it's going to be great, great for everybody, really. So, and then watch out for his tips. He'll come out on, I think, hopefully the next couple Tuesdays. He'll be putting a few out on video. Definitely. So, anything more you want to add? Um, yeah, just excited to be here at Head to Toe. Can't wait for you guys to come on it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, guys.